Okay, so here we are now. Let us read Mantra 8. And uh, it is the last mantra in the section about the vision of the Mahabhagavat. Yeah. And it's, oh, it's describing him very nicely. Sapariyagach chukra makayam avranam Asnaviram shudam apapa vidam, Kavir manishi paribu swayambur, swayambur, Yata tat yator tan vyada dach, Chashvatibya samabya. There are few verses in the Shapanishad couple or something like that, where the rhythm and so on is a bit not not as like in the Bhagavatam or the Gita, but that's okay. So here's the translation of Mantra 8. Such a person must factually know the greatest of all, the personality of Godhead, who is unembodied, omniscient, beyond reproach, without veins, pure and uncontaminated, the self-sufficient philosopher who has been fulfilling everyone's desire since time immemorial. Uh, okay, so just by way of introduction then to this mantra, it's describing, listing out specific characteristics of the Lord. Uh, and the, the Mahabhagavat, the great devotee, uh, as as the verse says, factually knows him, factually knows him. And the Madhyam Adhikaris, they also know him, having heard about him and having knowledge about him. Therefore, they also, they know him, although in not exactly the same way. So, yeah, his characteristics, he's the greatest of all. Uh, he, he is unembodied, <laughs> means no material body, omniscient, so perfect, he's beyond reproach, so perfect he cannot be subjected to criticism. That's what beyond reproach means. He has no veins, he's pure, uncontaminated, and he's the self-sufficient knower philosopher, Noah, who has been fulfilling everyone's desires since time immemorial. Okay, so let's go into the, par the uh, purport here. Uh, here now, we are, uh, for, again, I mean, it's been to some degree before. So again, we're focusing on the form of the law. Again, again, it's showing the absolute is not formless. He has a form, his own form. Ah, uh, yes, different from the form, forms that we have. We have veins. <laughs> he has no veins. And various other things, differences are there. Ah. Uh, and Prabhupada explains our bodies, they're more or less just like machines which operate in certain ways. Krishna makes that point in, in Bhagavad Gita, yantra rudani mayaya, that the living entities are living in the in bodies which are just like, which are machines made of the material nature. Yes, uh, and, and Prabhupada makes the point that it's said here that he's unembodied, which means, whereas we are embodied, means we are spirit souls, and we're living within these material bodies. But Krishna, Prabhupada explains in the first paragraph, uh, he he. He and his body are one. 
he, he is not some special sort of soul living in some special sort of body. He is his body. He is his body. So he is not embodied. That's the sense there. And so, therefore, he is not forced to accept a body as we are. And let me just read the translation again of Bhagavad Gita chapter 4, verse 6, which I read, was it last night or the night before, I forget, when we were also talking about the Lord's form. <clears throat> so chapter 4, verse 6 of Bhagavad Gita Although I am unborn and my transcendental body never deteriorates, and although I am the Lord of all living entities, by my internal energy, I still appear in every millennium in my original transcendental form. So Srila Prabhupada concludes the paragraph, for the Supreme Lord, there's ne never any such difference between him and his body and mind. He is the complete whole, and his mind, body, and he himself are all one and the same. Let's read. We'll, we'll do paragraph two. Let's do paragraph two, and then I think we'll stop there. All right, so in... Uh, Brahma Samhita, verse 1, you all know that, I'm sure. Ishvara Parama Krishna, Satchit Ananda Vigraha. That, that line is uh, quoted here. Anadya Adya Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. But particularly here we're talking about his body, which is Satchit Ananda Vigraha. Uh, he is the eternal form. Not that he has the eternal form. We have eternal forms also, but, we're, but we don't know what they are at this point. But he is the eternal form, fully representing transcendental existence, knowledge, and bliss. So therefore, he doesn't require a separate body or mind, because we also have our subtle bodies. You are not your mind. That's an important point. So, so yeah, in Shastra, um, it's described how his body is completely different from our body. And Prabhupada refers to Brahma Samhita verse 32, which states that each and every part of his body can do the work of the other senses. Let me just read that verse to you. And Gani Yasya Sakalendriya Vritti Manti, Pasyanti Panti Kalayanti Chiram Jaganti, Ananda Chinmaya Sad Ujvala Vigrahasya, Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, whose transcendental form is full of bliss, truth, substantiality and is thus full of the most dazzling splendor. Each of the limbs of that transcendental figure possesses in himself, not in itself, but in himself, the full-fledged functions of all the organs and eternally sees, maintains, and manifests the infinite universes, both spiritual and and material. <clears throat> so in other words, it means he can, uh, he can walk, uh, he can walk with his hands, accept things with his legs, see with his hands and feet, eat with his eyes, etc. Yes, all these things. So Srila Prabhupada concludes the paragraph in the Shruti Mantras, it is also said that although the Lord has no hands and legs like ours, he has a different type of hands and legs by which he can accept all that we offer him 
and he can run faster than anyone. These points are confirmed in this eighth mantra, mantra through the use of words like shukram, omnipotent. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Kejai.